everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase, and happy birthday, Hot Wheels. As most of you know, Hot Wheels turned 50 this last Friday, and instead of destroying all of your ears by singing, I am going to celebrate by showing you my 50 favorite Hot Wheels. Now, I'm going to do it pretty easy. If I talked about all 50, we'd be here for a few hours. I am only going to talk about my top 10, but first I'm going to show you the other 40 that are part of my 50 favorite. We're going to montage through those very quickly, and then I will break down my final 10. And as we're going through those 40, you should try and figure out what would be John of the Lamley Group's 10 favorite Hot Wheels and see if you can guess as we are going through. Just so you know, most of the Hot Wheels that I collect are from the last few years, so these are all from about 2005 and up. That's the era that I prefer. That's why you might not see red lines or certain others, because that's just not what I do. All right, guys, let's get to it. Here are the first 40. All right, those were the first 40 of my favorite 50. Any surprises there? You can tell me down below. Maybe some, I mean, you'll see these next 10. You can see if I've omitted some. I'm sure there are some that you don't agree with. But those are my 50 favorite. Obviously, heavy dose of Japanese, but you can see there's quite a bit of others as well. These are not in order. I don't have them ranked. They're just my 10 favorite of the top 50. And I'll say the last one's pretty special, but so is this one. This is the Porsche 934. RSR Toy Fair model from 2016. It is gold. It is gorgeous. And yes, it is expensive, but that is not why this is here. Toy Fair models, maybe not great that I'm showing these because they are harder to acquire and they weren't really basically made for um, a mass audience. They were made for as a promotional item for retailers when uh, Hot Wheels was previewing their toy line. But there is just something incredible about this beautiful Rio Asada design model in this kind of deep copperish gold. Yeah, it's a $1,500 model or $1,300, whatever it's been selling for lately. Not cheap, but special. 
and for obvious reasons, it is just an absolutely gorgeous model. I really like this casting. I thought about doing the first edition orange version, but uh, this one just supersedes all. So that is the that is one of my top ten. As is this one, continuing through the top ten. This is the Ford Transit Supervan released in the Hot Wheels Heritage Real Riders line. If you remember that line, it alternated between red lines and real riders. Kind of a hit and miss line, but this was such a gem to come out of that heritage line. It is an almost darn near perfect replica of a crazy van that, that uh, Ford built in the UK. It has a Ford GT40 engine in the back, and it, yes, if you take the model apart, you will see it's there. And this is the uh, everything. And I especially like how it has the slight front rake, front to back. It sits higher in front, and if you look at the actual Supervan, that is what it looks like. This is an absolutely incredibly cool model. And here is the next one. You might be surprised. We're three models in and still no Japanese cars. Clearly, we'll get to it. But this is the Ford 1972 Ford Gran Torino Sport. I can't give you a real good reason why I love this model. It's just that once it was released, designed by Brendan Vitusky, I just couldn't get enough of it. Something about the actual car, I kind of love that early 70s Ford look. These were boats, if there was ever a boat model. Ford was making boats at the time. I just love the front grille. I love everything they did, and I have just... I had to, this is one of my top five castings of all time, and I collect everything that they released with the Gran Torino Sport, and I had to figure out which one was my favorite. Well, you saw that there was the RLC in blue into my top 40, but this one goes into my top 10 as the original, and yes, it looks a lot like Clint Eastwood's car from the movie Gran Torino. All right, if you've been watching the Lamley YouTube channel or reading the Lamley blog, you know that this one, the Mercedes-Benz 190E, was my favorite model of 2017 from Car Culture and an instant addition to my top 10, maybe even my top five. I love the casting. We've seen the second version just released in Eurospeed, but this first version will never ever be topped. It is perfect. This was also a no brainer. It is the Hot Wheels Speed Machines Zamac Ferrari 599XX. The 599XX debuted in Speed Machines. We also saw it as a Super Treasure Hunt, which was also part of my top 50. You saw that earlier. This one was the fourth color and the hardest to find, only released in some countries, not in the United States, and very, very difficult to find. That is not why I like this one. Why I like it is because I love the casting and I love this version. Raw, of course, because it's Zamac. Clean, clean deco. Really precise, if you look how precise it is. Very simple, full deco, and I love how they did just the gray uh, co-mold wheels on this model. All right, there is a Japanese car. I thought you were gonna see one. I, you had to assume you were gonna see one in the top 10. This isn't the last of the Japanese cars in the top 10, but this one is an all-timer for me. Ja Japanese Nostalgic Car, the website, who has had a great, strong relationship with Hot Wheels, cites a few cars as kind of ushering in the Hot Wheels JDM era. They have been writing a lot about Hot Wheels. You should go to JapaneseNostalgicCar.com, read about what they've done. They've also written a tribute to Juna Mai, who just recently left Mattel to pursue a new opportunity. And so, obviously, the best of luck to June. Will he be missed? Well, of course. Will the brand keep going? You bet it will. There's some fantastic designers there. And the brand is in very, very good hands. But we move forward. This is one of June's great designs. This, along with the Hokoska, which I showed in my top 50 as well, released in 2011, were, in Japanese nostalgic cars view, the two cars that really ushered in the JDM era. I argue that it's one more that I'll show you in a little bit. But um, this one, it's clean, has the rear deco, the side deco, doesn't need really need the front deco. Just a surprisingly beautiful model. and surprise at the time that they do a Ken Mary Skyline. Fantastic. I love this. This was my favorite. Consider my favorite model up until this one. Yes, this is the C110 Skyline Hokoska Wagon. I dubbed this my favorite Hot Wheels and I, if I had to pick one, this is definitely my number one now. 
so precisely detailed, also designed by June Amai. Absolutely gorgeous, and I actually put it, I think, next to a Tomica Limited Vintage just because while the style's a little different, every element on this one, you can just see when Hot Wheels is allowed to go super premium, spend a few more dollars on its, on its uh, design and execution, they can pretty much do anything, and this is as good an example as that. Not only a fantastic choice, a Costco wagon, unique choice, but a tremendous execution. All right, three left, and one of those is this. Another June of my casting, but we don't associate June a lot of times, while, although we should, with, with uh, car makers outside of Japan. June has done a lot, and there's actually quite a few non-Japanese cars that are in my top 50 list, including this one. This is the 76 Greenwood Corvette, completely over-the-top racing Corvette, designed by John Greenwood. I think it's John. You can see Jay Greenwood up there on the roof. This is from the Hot Wheels Racing Series. It followed uh, vintage racing. And I didn't. I wasn't aware of the Greenwood Corvette, but I love this era of Corvette, and I love the fact that they're just over the top as it was. But this thing went well beyond that. And June bringing this one to life was a fantastic choice. All right, we are under the final two. Did any of you predict this one? You kind of had to. This is one of the most famous Hot Wheels from the last few years. It is the 55 Bel Air Gasser, designed by Brendan Vitusky. And it is also known as the Candy Striper. Hot pink, Spectra Flame pink. Steve Vandervate designed this. And you can see that he went all out. It is also a big ticket item now, super, super expensive, hard to come by, and you gotta pay through the nose to get it. But there's a reason why it's sought after. It's because well, you just have to look at it. Now, can you guess what my first one is, the number one model? I'm not saying it's my absolute favorite, but I think it is one of the most influential, one of the most important models during my time as the Lamley Group, one of the best, most important models, and also one that I think ushered in the JDM era. Can you think what it is? If you guessed the Hot Wheels Boulevard Datsun 510 wagon, then congratulations to you. This is the final of my top 50 of my 50 favorites. I'd still say the Hakosuka wagon is my all-time favorite casting, but this one in terms of influence and in terms of the role it's played in the way I collect and the way so many people collect I think this one has to be the final one I show for a couple of reasons. One, Japanese nostalgic car sa says that the two skylines have probably brought in the JDM era at Hot Wheels, June and Mai's designs. I'd say this one sent to, into the stratosphere. It was not only a very cool model based on June's own 510 wagon, but it became kind of a legend in that it was incre incredibly hard to find. Stores didn't want Boulevard by the time this thing was released, so it didn't sh really show up in mass at ever. And for those that did find it, they were they found it in TJ Maxx stores. That's where I found a few. Um, and it became just something that people wanted, but they couldn't just go get it. Also, the demand for this car, for a premium Japanese car, along with the Skyline in the same release, I think started pushing Hot Wheels to think, you know, maybe it's not about Hot Wheels nostalgia, but more about car culture. Hence, car culture it took a while for it to come but we have we are now in the car culture era i would call that i would call it the more car culture era than jdm era at hot wheels where we're seeing realism racing variety exactly what car culture is and i think this wagon had a great deal to do with that so i think this is the most influential model of the last 10 years i think it's one of the most influential models just in hot for hot wheels in general and it is definitely one of my 50 favorites I hope you guys enjoyed it. There you go. Tell me what you agree with. Tell me what you don't agree with. Tell me some of the models that you'd put in your top 50. Think about it. It's kind of fun. Thanks, everybody. Happy birthday, Hot Wheels. Bye.